Hello grade 11 students, magandang araw sa inyong lahat. It's me again, Sir Carl. Ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon sa ating lesson subject with regards to practical research 1 is itong tinatawag nating types of research. Uh, meron tayong mga types of research at meron yung mga pinagbabasihan based on its category. Number 1 is based on its application. Number 2 is based on purpose of the research. Number 3 is based on types of data needed. Yun yung tatlong uh, pinagbabasihan when it comes to types of research. Okay, so pag-usapan na natin. Okay, so meron tayong dalawang types of research based on application. If, if your research deals with concept, principle, or abstract things, so ibig sabihin, Kapag yung research mo ay ang purpose niya is uh, kumuha ka ng konsepto, makalakap ka ng mga information to increase your knowledge. Alam mo yun, kasi nagre-research tayo, minsan kasi nagre-research tayo is para lang makakuha tayo ng information, ng data. Gusto lang natin malaman yung isang bagay. So, if your research is something like that, these types of research is what you call pure research. However, if your intention is to apply your chosen research to societal problems or issue, ibig sabihin, you are finding ways to make positive changes in society. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Kapag ikaw ay nagre-research, ang intention mo is makasolve ng mga problems in society, problems sa community nyo, sa barangay. You are finding ways to make a positive changes in your community. You are researching for application of it. So, ang tawag doon sa research na yon is applied research. Napakalayo ng uh, pinagkaiba ng pure research sa applied research. Okay? Again, yung pure research is just researching for some information, for some data na kailangan mo, may gusto ko lang malaman, or may gusto ko lang ikumpara, gusto mo lang ma-increase yung knowledge mo about doon, madagdagan yung mga kaalaman mo about sa topic or about sa, about sa issue. Your type of research is pure research. Pero kapag ikaw ay nagre-research para makapag-solve ka ng mga problems in society, para magkaroon ng positive change, dun sa community mo, ang tawag sa types ng research na yon is applied research. So, number two, based on purpose of the research. Okay, so depending on your objective or goal in conducting research, you do any of these types of research. So, marami tayong types of research based on purpose of the research. Number one is yung descriptive research. Number two is yung ating correlation research. Number three is yung tinatawag nating explanatory research. Number four, yung ating tinatawag na exploratory research. And number five is yung tinatawag nating action research. So yung limang types ng research na yon based on purpose of the research ay ipapaliwanag ko sa inyo ng isa-isa. Okay, so simula natin dito sa descriptive research. Basahin ko muna yung definition. This type of research aims to defining or giving a verbal portrayal or picture of a person, things, event, group, situation, etc. So, ang sabi rito, your, your purpose of research is to define or to give a verbal picture. No? Pag sinabing picture, parang i-describe mo uh, yung isang topic or content na gusto mong pag-aralan. The, the main word here is describe. Kaya tinatawag na descriptive research. So, you're giving picture of a person, things, event, group, or situation. This, this is liable to repeated research because each topic relates itself only to a certain period or limited number of years. Yes, so to ito, no? Like for example, ang research ko is about academic performance ng uh, grade 11 students sa general mathematics. I know for sure na meron ng nag-research tungkol doon. So, kung ako ay magbabasa, kukuha ng idea, doon sa mga research na katulad sa akin or related sa akin, hindi ako pwedeng kumuha ng mga research sobrang luma na or sobrang tagal na kasi maaring yung mga data na nandun is hindi na applicable sa akin. So, nagigets nyo? 
Kaya ang sabi dito is, this is liable to repeated research. Yes, kasi yung mga descriptive is parang inuulit yung topic. Parang gusto kong pag-aralan ulit to. Pero, sa ibang aspect ko titingnan Yung whole picture is katulad lang din nung mga naunang research. Kaya repeated research. Since nauulit yung mga ganitong types of research, dapat yung kukunin mong mga research is updated. No? Five years ago, two years ago, hindi yung sobrang... 20 years ago na yung research, kukunan mo pa ng mga related literature o kukunan mo pa ng mga concept or mga ideas. Hindi na pwede kasi pag gumagawa tayo ng research, meron tayong mga requirements in terms of related studies and related literature. At hindi ka pwedeng kumuha ng sobrang tagal na ng mga research. If I'm not mistaken, kung ako ay nag-aaral ng masteral, ang required sa amin is dapat hindi tataas sa 10 years yung uh, current date ngayon. So, like for example, ngayon is 2021. So, dapat ang kukunin mong mga research is mga 2011 pataas. Dapat ang kinukuha nating related study and related uh, literature is yung mga updated. Okay? So, kaya tinatawag nito na its topic relates itself only to a certain period or limited number of years. Okay, so pangalawang types ng research natin based on purpose is yung tinatawag nating correlation research. So ano ba tong correlation research? Ang sabi dito, correlation research shows relationship or connectedness of two factors. Circumstances or agent called variables that affect the research. Dito sa type ng research na to na correlation, you are studying two factors and try to find out if the two factors are related to one another. So, bibigay ko sa inyo ng example. Example is yung height and weight. Gusto nating malaman, kapag tumataang kad ba yung isang tao, so height, one variable, is bumibigat ba siya? Yan, so, weight, no? We are trying to find out if height and weight are related to each other. That is an example of a correlation. Another example is yung number of hours si studying. Is it related to the score or the grades of the students? No. So yung isang factor is yung number of hours na nag-aaral ka, inispend mo sa study mo. Related ba yon sa magandang grades mo? So we are trying to find out the relationship of number of hours to the result of the grades of the students. That kind of research is what we call correlation research. Okay, number three, based on purpose of the research pa rin, is what we call explanatory research. So, this type of research elaborates or explain not just the reason behind the relationship of two factors, but also the way by which each relationship exists. So, it's something related to correlation kasi ini-elaborate niya or in-explain niya yung reason why these two factors are related to one another. In-explain niya rin dito why these two factors exist. Ganun yung ano dito, yung sa explanatory research. So, next natin is yung exploratory research. Pang-apat, number four. An exploratory research purpose is to find out how reasonable or possible to conduct a research study on a certain topic. Here, you will discover ideas that could trigger your interest in conducting research studies. Okay, so dito sa type of research na to, along the way kasi kapag nagre-research ka ng certain topic mo and then you are on the process na, dinidig mo na yung, yung mga information, ang nagko-collect ka na ng information, merong instances na makaka-discover ka ng ideas, ideas, or concept that trigger your interest in conducting another research study. I'm conducting my research na And then, along the way, doing my research, nakadiscover pa ako ng magandang, magandang topic at magandang ideas na nakapag-trigger sa akin na gawan siya ng research. That is exploratory research. Number five, the last uh, types of research based on purpose is what we call action research. No? This type of research studies an ongoing practice of a school, organization, community, or institution for the purpose of obtaining result that will bring improvement in the system. Yung type of research na to, the action research, is nag-exist at patuloy na pinapractice 
sa mga institution like school, organization, communities, no? Na ang ginagawa is para ma-improve yung sistema. No? Like for example, sa amin sa school, meron kaming nakikita ang mga problems in terms of uh, laziness of the students, bakit sila ma-absent, bakit ang baba ng mga nakukuha nila sa exam, hindi sila nakapasok ng maaga. Okay, so those problems. So ang ginagawa namin is, ginagawa namin yan ng action research. Dapat masolusyonan kagad namin yung mga ganong problema. Kung unang gagawin, aalamin mo yung mga issues and concern about that particular topic. And then you're going to try to solve the problem. So that is what you call action research. So nag-exist siya sa mga institution na kailangan kagad masolusyonan yung mga problema. Kaya tinatawag na action research. Kailangan natin kagad aksyonan. Okay, so yung last category natin is based on types of data needed. Based on data needed, meron tayong dalawang types of research which is Qualitative research, quantitative research. Okay, so pag-uusapan natin yung dalawang yun. Although, meron ako yung idea what is this qualitative research. O, kasi na-discuss na natin before, qualitative research requires non-numerical data. Which means, this research use words rather than numbers to express the result from the inquiry, from observation, from investigation about people's thought beliefs, feelings, views, and lifestyle regarding the object of the study. So, ito daw ay nagre-require ng hindi mga numero in presenting or expressing the result. So, gumagamit ito ng mga verbal content explanation dun sa pagpe-present niya ng mga result niya about people's thought, people's feeling, people's lifestyle, people's uh, viewpoints with regards to the study. So, yun yung qualitative research. Next is yung quantitative research. So, kabalikta rin siya nung qualitative research. Kung yung, kung yung qualitative research is pinepresent mo yung mga data na nakalap mo using words, using verbal, eto naman, gumagamit ka ng mga numbers to, to present the data from the study. Quantitative research involves measurement of data. Thus, it present research finding referring to number of frequency of something in numerical form, percentage, fraction, numbers. Pag pinipresent yung data dito is gumagamit ng mga numerical form such as percentage, fraction, numbers, mga tables uh, to show the result of a particular study. Pero sa baba, may sulat pa rin, in-explain pa rin kung ano yung nandun sa, sa tables, no? kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng mga numero, mga numbers na pinresent niya, may explanation pa rin dun sa baba. No? So, yun yung pinagkaiba ng quantitative research sa qualitative research. Okay, speaking of data, ito yung last lesson ngayon. Ito yung ating mga pinag-aaralan. Diba? Ito yung ating ina-analyze dun sa ating research. The data you deal with research are either primary or secondary data. So, meron tayong dalawang klase ng data which is primary and secondary. So, pag-usapan natin itong primary. Primary are obtained through direct observation or contact with people, object, artifacts, paintings, etc. Ibig sabihin, ikaw mismo yung nakakita, ikaw mismo yung uh, merong direct experience dun sa pangyayari, na-experience mo sila. That is direct observation or direct contact. Ito tinatawag na primary data. Primary data as well are new and original information resulting from your sensory experience. Ngayon yun yung sinasabi ko, no? Since ikaw yung merong uh, personal experience, personal contact dun sa study mo, dun sa data na yon, this is original information resulting from your sensory experience no na, nakita mo eh senses nakita mo narinig mo naramdaman mo okay so that is primary data sa kabilang banda if such data have already been written or reported and available for reading purposes they exist as secondary data so yung secondary data, yung information is hindi mo na kailangang ma-experience personal kasi nakasulat na siya sa books. 
Meron ng video sa YouTube tungkol doon. Meron ng mga clips, meron ng mga documentation about doon. So, what you're going to do is you just have to read them. Uh, pakinggan mo yung mga videos na yun, panoorin mo. Pero, hindi na to, uh, hindi na to original information na ikaw talaga yung naka-experience noon. Because, this is already written and reported. So, yung mga gantong data ay tinatawag natin secondary data. Okay? So, yun yung research data. Meron tayong dalawa which is primary data and secondary data. Okay, so natapos na yung ating video lesson ngayong umaga. Uh, napag-usapan natin yung mga types of research based on, based on application, based on purpose, and based on data needed. At nagdagdag ako ng research data na dalawa, which is primary data and secondary data. Sa dulo ng video is meron akong ipopost na, na question. So, pakisagot, write your answer in comment section. Makikita niya rin yung question sa comment section kasi pinin ko. So, yun yung magiging performance task natin ngayong araw. Okay? So, kung meron ka natutunan sa video na to, can you please like and share para mas maraming students na kagaya mo matuto in terms of this particular lesson. Hanggang sa muli, this is Sir God. Ingat tayong lahat. God bless everyone.